Hello, I'd like to talk about William Smith and his time in Bath. This is a short presentation for the Geologists Association's Festival of Geology being held in November 2020. And I am Maurice Tucker from the University of Bristol, speaking on behalf of the Bath Geological Society, one of the amateur geological societies in Britain. So in this talk, I would like to tell you about William Smith when he came to Somerset and Bath in 1791 um, and his activities here until he left in 1819. William Smith was born in 1769 in Oxfordshire and he was um, a, a land surveyor, training to be a land surveyor and came to Somerset at the age of 22. He lived, first of all, in High Littleton, about 10 miles southwest of Bath. He came here to survey some coal mines for probate, to work out the value of the estate. And in examining these coal measures and going underground in all the various coal mines in the Somerset coal field, he began to realize that some of the beds could be followed. He also was looking at the overlying Triassic and Jurassic strata, and in this way, looking at these sedimentary beds with their fossils, he began to realize that he could correlate the layers from one place to another, and he could use the fossils for correlation. So was developed the idea of stratigraphy. He was really the person who established stratigraphy as a branch of earth sciences. However, it has to be said that Smith was very much influenced by John Strachey, a local landowner who in the early 1700s lived in this area and also had some coal mines. And in fact, he would go down his coal mines and look at the strata, look at the layers. And he began to realize that he could actually recognize the different layers in his different mines. He published a couple of papers in the Royal Society of London. And he clearly showed from his diagrams and his text that he could he understood that he could follow layers of rock, that they were distinctive. And he also appreciated how rocks dipped. They had um, an, a tilt, and he realized that in some directions, they looked horizontal, as you can see from his cross sections in the lower right here. Clearly, he had an understanding of dip and strike. This in the early 1700s, quite remarkable. Smith read the works of John Strachey, and this must have influenced him. So William Smith lived at Rockbourne Farm, and you can still visit the place today. From 1795 to 1798, William Smith worked for the Somerset Coal Canal Company, surveying the route for the Poulton to Midford Canal to join the Kennington Avon Canal near Dundas. You can see on the map here the line of the canal in the dotted, following the uh, Midford and Tam Brooks. This was to transport coal from the Somerset coal field in the southwest of the region to the Kennington Avon Canal for onward transport to Bath, Bristol, and also to London. While in Bath, William Smith lived in Bloomfield Crescent on the south side of Bath, a fine house, as you can see here, still there today, with great views over Bath. He left the Somerset Coal Canal Company in uh, 1798, we're not exactly sure why, to become a full-time consultant land and drainage surveyor. So from um, here onwards, Smith was uh, traveling widely, gathering lots of information on the geology of England, while conducting survey works for the land gentry. In 1798, he bought an old mill near Midford, about three or four kilometers south of Bath, a mill for processing wool using the local Fuller's Earth. He lived at Tucky Mill, he had a house there, that's on the right-hand side of this building here on the left. And um, this mill he did eventually change to a stone cutting facility when he bought a quarry nearby. More of that in a minute. Um, during his travels, uh, during his studies of the 
rocks and the bedrock for he, the coal canal, he began to realize he could follow all the layers of rock. And in 1799, he produced his order of strata, dividing the layers of rock up from number one, the chalk, which occurs to the east of Bath, down through the Jurassic and the Triassic to number 28, the limestone below the coal measures. That's the mountain limestone, the Carboniferous limestone, with lots of fossil corals and bracket pods. This effectively was the first stratigraphic column. The original order of strata was actually presented, dictated to his friends in Great Pulteney Street in Bath, and there's a plaque on the house there. Uh, but the first order of strata was actually handwritten by one of his friends, and he later updated that to a, a proper um, stratigraphic table. Um, in 1799, the next year, William Smith produced his first map. This was the geology of the area five miles around Bath, showing the distribution of the Triassic, that's the red rocks here in the northwest quadrant, known as red ground to him, and the Jurassic strata, in gray, the lias, and in yellow, the middle Jurassic oolites, that is the under and the upper oolites, the inferior and the upper oolites. In 1801, Smith had gathered enough information to start to draft his general map of strata in England and Wales. He used the John Carey base map and marked across the region the various units he could follow from his travels, uh, mostly Mesozoic, um, but also noting other features of, the, of English and Welsh geology. In 1802, things were going pretty well for William Smith. He had an office in Bath in Trim Street, and he also had a house in London from 1804 to 1819. Um, during this time, he was traveling widely, collecting fossils, conducting his survey work, and his fossil collection was put on show in London, in his house there, near Charing Cross. Um, he collected lots of fossils. His display was arranged in stratigraphic order and visited by many, many eminent people interested in natural history and geology. So his fossils that he collected, many, many thousands, some of these were drawn by James Sowerby, a famous artist of the day, and published in 1816 to 1819 as strata identified by organized fossils. This was the new discipline of biostratigraphy. Um, in 1811, um, William Smith was running into debt from uh, all his adventures, and um, he uh, hoped to pay off his debts by buying a quarry at Kingham Field in Bath Down, about three kilometers south of Bath. Um, you can see on the left the location of the quarry. Uh, it's now bricked up, but there is an entrance, as you can see there, and you can peer in. Um, this was a, a quarry in Bath Freestone, but unfortunately there are a lot of faults and fractures and cambering going on. It was really quite a poor choice of site. He'd cut a tunnel into the back of the quarry, high enough for a horse and carriage to be drawn to bring the stone out and a tramway took the stone down to Smith's Mill at Tucky Mill, which was now converted to a stone cutting facility. It was right next to the Midford Canal for onward transport. But unfortunately, this venture into uh, obtaining Bath stone, it failed, it wasn't a success. And Smith wrote in his notebook, there it was, I sought a prize, but there interred my money lies. In 1815, at last, William Smith completed his geological map, much acclaimed. But he unfortunately was in debt and his quarry was failing. Uh, people called in his debt. And in 1819, he went bankrupt and spent 10 weeks in a debtor's prison in London. He sold his quarry, Tucking Mill, his London house, his fossil collection, and went north to Hackness Grange in Scarborough. He produced um, several version of, of versions of his map updated over the next 10 or 15 years. And he also produced individual maps of some of the counties of England. So he left Bath, but unfortunately he never came back. 
although his legacy, of course, lives on and on. So um, that's just a tale of William Smith and his time in Bath and Somerset. This talk has been given on behalf of the Bath Geological Society. If you'd like it, to hear any uh, information about our society, please visit our website or contact our membership secretary. We are affiliated to the Bath Royal Literature Scientific Institution. Um, it, actually, William Smith belonged to the forerunner of that, the Bath Agricultural Society. And we meet every month for talks in Queen Square Bath, and we have field trips in the summer months. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this little um, talk.